Sports gamblers used to betting on FanDuel may soon get the opportunity to literally bet on FanDuel, their parent company, considering a U.S. listing. Flutter, Contessa Bro, what is Flutter? And why now? And, and what do you know about it? I love those questions, and I can <laughs> answer them. So Flutter, you guys, is FanDuel's parent company. It's traded in, the, uh, in Europe, and it's based in Ireland. And what they have said is they think that if they put a listing from Flutter in the U.S. on the exchanges that they get access to more investors. They get deeper pockets where capital is concerned. They get uh, more brand recognition. And when you think about it, when we talk about the sports betting stocks, we talk often about DraftKings because it really is at this point the only pure play on sports betting. But FanDuel Tradable is, in the U.S. Exactly. I mean, there's a, look, Caesars. MGM has a stake in BetMGM. You've got Penn that has a uh, growing sports betting business, and they just had a quarter where they proved profitability. But FanDuel doesn't get that kind of attention because its parent company is traded overseas. So Flutter thinks it can come in. It, uh, it may be able to expand in lots of ways. And right now, FanDuel is its most important business. It's got the biggest share of company revenues um, in just a few years, and it has other big names like Patty Power and Betfair. Mm. So this is a big deal for them to come in and consider it. But a big hurdle is that they're talking to shareholders, then they would put it to a vote. It would have to get 75% of shareholder approval to move forward. And this is a tough climate for IPOs. Would, would shareholders nat uh, naturally go along with this idea, or would, what would they fear? Maybe, Why would they not? Maybe not, because some of them might not want to hold U.S. stock, for instance, so that might you might lose some shareholders in that way. However, when you look at the trajectory of growth, here's FanDuel that has about 42% market share nationwide. It is not getting wow. stock market credit for that leading status. And FanDuel believes, and, and Flutter, that the total addressable market in the United States could be more than $40 billion by 2030. Jeffrey's analyst points out that would be bigger than three times the rest of the world. So if you're in the business of making sports betting profitable and lucrative, this is the place that you want to be. So they've got 40% in the U.S. Who's second? Uh, DraftKings? DraftKings is, is second. And Peter Jackson, the CEO of Flutter, said to me in November, and he said publicly at an investor day, he's like, you know, it's really interesting when we're thinking about an IPO of FanDuel alone, which has been widely expected in this industry. He said, we're watching DraftKings, and what we see is that they're benefiting from their customers actually buying their stock. And as you said, oh, Kelly, actually betting on DraftKings, and they'd like to get a piece of that action. Speaking of all this sports betting, one more thing I wanted to note. You know, I did this story yesterday about Super Bowl betting. FanDuel got hold of me today and said, we mischaracterized our peak betting rate. Hmm. They told me it was 50,000 bets per second. It was actually 50,000 bets coming in per minute, which makes a difference, of course. Everybody's working on very little sleep post-game time. It's still uh, that's a lot. what I was going to say. It's still a lot. <laughs> yeah, for sure it is. And, and exciting times for them to come in and now talk about well, and maybe they're trying it? to ride some of that momentum, but again, a tough, tough market. And it's interesting what you said too about where the shareholder base is and if they'll want to go with it. Thank you, Contessa. Sure. We appreciate it.